Hello folks, it's Matmus here with you today, thank you so much for joining me. So we're doing something completely different from my channel, something that I would normally never ever do, but I did inform you in the past that this is something I'm going to try and venture into the world of, and I'm hoping it's not going to bite me in the ass, because at the end of the day, um, I am not anything to do with the Navy, I know very very little about the Navy, and I'm not going to make out like I do know a lot about the Navy. With that being said, any information that I provide to you in this video, and any further videos in involving ships or naval forces is going to come from factual sites that I can get the best and most accurate information from. However, if there is anything that I do produce or inform you of that is incorrect, please feel free to inform me and I will try my best to correct it. I do apologize in advance if anything is wrong, but this isn't normally my kind of thing that I do, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway because, hey, we've got to give some love to the Navy. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very prominent and very powerful ship of the United States Navy, the DDG-51 Alley Burke class destroyer. They are warships that provide multi-mission offensive and defensive capabilities. Destroyers can operate independently or as part of a carrier strike group, surface action group, amphibious ready group, and an underway replenishment group. There are multiple different variants of this ship. Guided missile destroyers are multi-mission anti-warfare ships, known as AAWs. There is an anti-submarine warfare ship, known as the ASW, and an anti-surface warfare ship, known as the ASUW, surface combatants. The destroyer's armament has greatly expanded the role of the ship in strike warfare, utilizing the Mark 41 Vertical Launch System, or VLS. Technological advances have improved the capability of most modern destroyers, culminating in the Alley Burke DDG-51 class, replacing the older Charles F. Adams and Farragut class guided missile destroyers. Like the larger Ticonderoga class cruisers, DDG-51's combat capability centers around the Aegis weapon system, or AWS, which we all know is very, very famous for its combat effectiveness. The AWS is composed of the SPY-1D multifunction phased radar array. Advanced AAW and ASW systems, the VLS, and the Tomahawk weapon system. These advances allow the RA Burke class to continue the revolution at sea and provide extremely powerful combat effectiveness. The RA Burke class employs all steel construction and is comprised of three separate variants or flights. DDG 5171 represents the original design and are designated Flight 1 ships. DDG-7278 are Flight 2 ships. DDG-79 and follow ships are built or being built to the Flight 2 Alpha design. The Flight 3 baseline is planned for the second ship in FY16. 62 ships are currently operating in the US fleet. An additional 13 ships are under contract, including the most recent contract award on June 3, 2013, for 9 ships as part of the FY13-17 multi-year procurement contract with Huntington, Ingalls Industries, and Bath Ironworks. Like most modern US surface combatants, DDG-51 utilizes gas turbine propulsion, employing four General Electric LM2500 gas turbines to produce a whopping 100,000 total shaft horsepower via a dual shaft design. The destroyers are capable of achieving up to 30 plus knot speeds in open seas. The Flight 2 Alpha design includes the addition of the Kingfisher mine avoidance capability. Along with that, a pair of helicopter hangars which provide the ability to deploy two MH-60 helicopters. It also has a blast hardened bulkhead and distributed electrical system and advanced network systems. Additionally, DDG-9196 provide accommodations for the an lwd one remote mine hunting system. The first Flight 2 Alpha, USS Oscar Austin, was commissioned in August 2000. A DDG modernization program has been underway to provide a comprehensive midlife upgrade that will ensure that these ships will remain in mission maintenance and relevance to the modern day battlefield. This will be an integral part of the Navy's Sea Power 21 plan. The designers of this ship incorporate lessons learned from the Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers. The latter, which was deemed too expensive to continue building and too difficult to further upgrade. With the Arleigh Burr class, the US Navy also returned to, as mentioned before, all steel construction. An earlier generation had combined a steel hull with an innovative superstructure made of lighter aluminum. However, the lighter metal proved vulnerable to cracking. Aluminium, I'm going to say it two ways, aluminium and aluminium, to please both Brits and Canadians slash North Americans, because all you get so triggered by it, is also less fire resistant than steel. 
1975 fire aboard the USS Belknap gutted her aluminum superstructure. This ship design does incorporate a stealth technique, such as the angled rather than traditional vertical surfaces, and the tripod mainmast, which makes the ship more difficult to detect, in particular anti-ship missile systems. Their Aegis combat system differs traditionally from the rotating radar that mechanically rotates 360 degrees for each sweep scan of the airspace. Instead, Aegis uses passively electronic scanned array, which allows for continual tracking of targets simultaneously with area scans. The ship's principal armament consists of 29 cell vertical launch systems housed in the bow just forward of the bridge superstructure, and 61 cell VLS positioned aft. The VLS can fire standard SAM weaponry and Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Tomahawk was deployed in 1986 and is the most powerful offensive missile in the arsenal of the US Navy. In addition to the missiles of the VLS system, the ship also carries 8 Harpoon SSMs in two 4 cell box launchers located aft, and one 5 inch gun in an automated gun house located on the bow, and six 12.7 inch torpedo tubes. There is also a Vulcan Phalanx gun for close-in weapon support for knocking out missiles and any other munitions heading towards the ship. This latter armament was ready for service in 1977 and is still in use by the US Navy today. The weapon is a 20mm Gatling gun that is fed by a magazine that holds around 1,000 rounds. It was designed as a last measure for defense to destroy incoming missiles at close range, but can also be used against aircraft. The gun can fire a rate of 100 rounds per second. Its computer controlled tracking system is built into the gun mount and can direct effective F fire over a range between 500 to 1500 yards. The Aegis system coordinates the use of all these weapons and relies on a large, flat sensory panel mounted on the side of the superstructure. All told, the Arleigh Burke class design of the multi role destroyer is among the most advanced and powerful in the world. The destroyer is able to defend itself against submarines with an anti-submarine combat system with active sonar and towed sonar array, also given anti-submarine rockets. They do support land strategic targets with the VLS launched Tomahawks and are able to detect anti-ship mines at a range of up to 1280 meters. So vital has the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System role of the class become that all of the ships in this class are being updated with BMD capability. The Burke production is being restarted in place of additional Zumwalt class destroyers. Overall for this ship's weapon systems, guns, 1x 127mm 45 cal Mark 45 modular 1 gun, 2 20mm Mark 15 mod 12 phalanx Gatling gun CIWS close in weapon systems, 2 times 25mm 75 cal Mark 38 mod 1 Bushmaster guns, and 4 12.7mm 50 cal machine guns on the side of the ships. There are 90 Mark 41 Mod 0 VLS SM2s, SM3s, SM6s missiles and Tomahawk missiles available, along with 8 RGM 84C Harpoon SSMs. It does have two triple 324mm Mark 32 Mod torpedoes. It is also given multiple decoys and countermeasures, some inclusive of that are a towed torpedo decoy, decoy buoy launch system, and launchable chaff pods. The ship has a crew of 30 officers and 302 enlisted Navy personnel. The ship has a maximum range of 4,400 nautical miles at 50 knots, before it needs to be refueled. Its full displacement is 8,400 tons with full load. Its full length is 155 meters, its beam is 20 meters, and maximum draft is 9.3 meters. So there you have it guys, the US Navy's Arleigh Burke class destroyer, a very powerful and diverse destroyer and something that is very very dominant on the seas. Now as I mentioned before, I know very little about the Navy so I'm not going to put my own opinions on this because I don't know enough about it and can really have no real judgement on how good or bad something is. What I will say though is I find it very impressive that this ship is continually being upgraded and being given the best resources and equipment needed for it to fulfil its mission with the US Navy, which is fantastic because no one likes to see ships decommissioned. At the same instance though, it seems like this ship has definitely served a very proud history in its time and I hope it continues to serve for many, many 
many years to come. Guys, I really do hope you enjoyed today's video and it gave you some sort of insight on this beautiful destroyer. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if I've made any mistakes. I'd be more than happy to correct them and I do apologize in advance if there are any mistakes. Big shout out to the US Navy and anyone serving in naval forces worldwide. I have a lot of respect for you. Um, I have never really given that whole stigma of the US, uh, or not the US Navy, but any Navy not doing enough graft and they kind of just plod around on the sea all day. It's not the way it is. I know how hard it must be to work out at sea. So a massive shout out and thanks to you all for serving our countries out on the oceans of the world. So once again, guys, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think. Have a great day. All the best and bye bye.